Good morning, Lincoln. I'm Audrey Paquette. And I'm Mia Sammons. Last Friday was a special Halloween edition of Lincoln Live, but since our stream didn't work, we decided to play it back for you today so you don't miss all the fun. Congratulations to the football team for their win on Friday, and congratulations to Alyssa Shope for winning the regional cross-country meet. We will run all of the other weekend sports tomorrow. Hope you enjoy the show. Live from Gehenna Lincoln High School's TV studio, this is Lincoln Live with Audrey Paquette and Mia Sammons. Coming up, coping with loss. At some point, senior athletes deal with the realization that it's over. You'll hear from a few. Students walk past this room every day and don't realize it's haunted. That's what the teacher says. We'll take you inside. And what's the scariest thing you've ever seen? We hit the hallways to ask. You're watching Lincoln Live. Happy Halloween, Lincoln. I'm Mia Sammons. And I'm Audrey Paquette. Hey, Mia, what are you dressed up as? I'm Velma from Scooby-Doo, and Daphne, Fred, and Shaggy are around the studio somewhere. What about you, Audrey? Well, I'm a green M&M, and there are a few more M&Ms in the studio as well. Oh, yeah, I think I can see them. And you know, there are a lot of others dressed up as well. That's true. Why don't we head behind the scenes into the control room? Well, it looks like we got an angel, blue M&M, a pirate, Josh the Feds. Uh, is that Mark Lowry back there? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of good costumes in there. Yeah, there really is. But let's also check out the people behind our cameras today. Looks like it's, they're in a construction zone. Uh, there's a cowboy, Darth Vader, the devil. Coraline? Really good, really good. Nice, nice. I think it's safe to say that Lincoln Live class probably had the best costumes for Halloween. Oh yeah, I totally agree with that. Besides costumes, what comes to your mind when you think about Halloween? Hmm, well, candy, ghosts. Speaking of ghosts, did you know that Mr. Wagner's room is haunted? I did not. Well, here he is, along with our resident ghost hunters, Gabriella and Regan. Right now, we're outside one of the most haunted places in GLHS. H-147, the residence of Barb. Barb Carroll was my high school teacher, and when I was in college, I came back to visit her, and Barb said, you should become a teacher. We taught together for a couple years. She was a big influence in my life, but a couple years into my teaching, unfortunately, we lost her. She passed very peacefully in her sleep. Immediately after she passed, things started to happen in the classroom that had not happened prior to that. We were talking about her instead of doing our work during a discussion. My water bottle fell off the table and jumped in. The yearbook was preparing to order their spirit wear, and somebody said spirit, and this whole stack of things that was like stuck on a door all fell off at the same time. One time students mentioned Gregory Peck, who plays Atticus Finch in Mockingbird, and that was her favorite actor of all time. And as soon as they said his name, this, the victory bell out on the football field started to ring. And so I went to the window to go yell at whatever kid was messing with it, and there was nobody there. And when I was like, oh, it was just the wind, then I looked up and saw that the flag was not blowing. I like to think that it was Barb taking a victory bell from Gregory Peck. So even though she does go bump in the night sometimes, um, it's all in loving ways and ways that make me feel loved and appreciated. Hey Mia, how sad are you that the soccer seniors are leaving? I'm very sad and I can't believe that next year I'll be a senior. I know, it's crazy to think about. As the fall season winds down, many of these seniors have many emotions about their season coming to an end. And our Brendan Phillips talked to a few of them about their plans after their season and how much leaving is affecting them. As the fall sports seasons are coming to a close, there are three senior captains that have been leading their teams day in and day out. The real question is, how do they do it? Uh, being a captain, definitely uh, is cool because a lot of people look, uh, look up to you. And um, being uh, in the program for four years uh, definitely helps me feel more about the program. And, you know, like Coach Ward's program is just amazing. Uh, it, it touches on football and life. Uh, and, you know, believing in that program is really easy. Uh, as a senior, it's really like just making sure you're including the, the underclassmen that are on varsity and in general underclassmen, uh, really just making sure they're all ready to play their games and do their part. As a captain, 
I just really try and be a leader. I try and be um, all my teammates' biggest fans. And even when they aren't doing like what they're supposed to be, I'm always there to support them and help them out in any way I can. Senior athletes feel lots of emotions about their athletic career being over, but they are able to make plans for the future. Really just making, staying around, uh, making sure the younger guys are taking over really, just making sure they're leading in the classroom, weight room, workouts. But yeah, really just try to stay a part of it. Yeah, so I mean, uh, definitely being a, a role model in the classroom. And uh, you know, there's still off season stuff that I, I can do for track and for football, like in college, if uh, you know, if I can make it there. Uh, but definitely lifting, uh, definitely leading, leading uh, my teammates, even like like in the off season, make sure the they're doing what they need to do because you know, I know I'm like gonna like for football, football wise, I'll be done. But like just as as a person, as a, a I guess past captain at that point, uh, I definitely want to help lead them to be better in uh, the rest of their uh, high school football career. These three athletes still have lots to look forward to in the future. Even though their seasons will be over and they will not be able to play another high school game ever again, they will still be able to tell their kids about how fun it truly was. This is Brendan Phillips for Lincoln Live. Thanks, Brendan. Hey, I think there's a mob boss in the studio today. Yeah, there is. And you know who it has to be? Oh, yeah, DeAndre Person. Hey, DeAndre, I like the costume. Thanks, yeah. A lot of people in our studio have some good costumes. Yeah, they really do. So, what do you have for us today? Well, as you know, there are many art courses offered here at our school. They allow some to showcase their artistic talents or provide a break away from academics. Co-art, a course where typical students work with students who learn differently, is one of those classes. We talked to two students to see what this class is up to. This class is really calming all together, and it's a break from what we use. And what's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? Um, one time when I was in South Carolina with my family on vacation, we got chased by an alligator. So that was pretty scary, and yeah, I'm happy to be alive. What's your name? Bailey Coberly. And what's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? Like getting called on in class. Okay. That's scary, yeah. What's your name? My name's Isaac Lutz. And what's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? The scariest thing that's ever happened to me is uh, I had a nightmare once where I was running away from like, I think, like some criminals or something. And then they shot me and I woke up after I got shot. And I felt the pain where, right where I got uh, shot. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. What's your name? Allison. And what's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? Probably when I grab the top of my burning hot curling iron. That's a bad one, yep. Okay, what's your name? Caden Plunkett. And what's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? Agreeing to do this interview. Yeah. 